Hey guys, uh, I just, I'm relatively new to the prepping thing, and, uh, something that I've seen that I, I wouldn't say I had a problem with it, but I probably disagree with a lot of people that are kind of doing a similar thing that I'm trying to get into, is the, uh, idea that a good, a good, uh, prep is gold and silver. Um, I know a lot of people advocate it, like, you know, first take care of your food, your supplies, your medical supplies, all that stuff, and then get into gold and silver, but, uh, I see a couple pretty big problems with that theory and uh, I just kinda wanted to go over with it and uh, kinda tell other people my opinions and see if you know sticks and makes any sense makes any sense to other people too um, this isn't so much aimed at people that are uh, looking at gold as like a long-term investment I haven't really studied you know gold you know gold values versus inflation stuff like that long-term in investing in gold I'm more looking at it from the aspect as a uh, post uh, shit hits the fan situation or a uh, martial law situation, something like that. Which I think most people that are investing in gold, at least on YouTube, seem to be in um, overall. So, a couple things I wanted to go with was uh, why. Why do, why, why do people invest in gold in the first place? What are they going to do with it once a uh, bad situation happens? What is it going to be used for? I think the number one thing is people expect to barter with it. They're going to, anything that they haven't prepped or they run out, and have prepped and run out of, they're going to exchange it for uh, the goods. They're going to use it as a form of currency, basically. Um, I think that's the biggest one people save it for. Um, the other one being a long-term investment, which I'm not going to cover, because, to be honest, I'm kind of arrogant about the long-term investment of gold and silver. So I'm going to focus mainly on the uh, post-shit-hit-the-fan post bartering. Um, first of all, uh, people think gold is safe because it's traditionally used as, traditionally been used as a form of currency. I don't think that's uh, actually a good thing to think because, first of all, uh, the whole premise about prepping is that there's going to be a breakdown of the government or the financial system, which the value of gold is completely dependent on. Um, I think a lot of people take for granted the fact, they think, you know, a lot of people bash fiat currency, and oh, you know, fiat currency, the government just manipulates money, and I don't think they realize that the value of gold and silver are in the same system. It's all manipulated, it's done by brokers, it's done by people uh, investing in it. Uh, commodity, it's the commodities market, the commodities market is just as corrupt as the freaking Federal Reserve system of printing money. So if you think that somehow the, the value of gold over time is going to be better than the fiat currency, fiat currency system we're currently working under, I think you're mistaken because it's run by the same people and the values and the people making money and profit off it overall are the same exact people. So I think it's a little bit naive of people to kind of think of that way, you know, as, you know, oh, it's, oh, it's going to be the, the substitute. The second thing is, uh, if it crashes, there's not going to be a reliable financial system, so basically money will be worthless or it will be relatively worth little. Um, that would be in the case of hyperinflation. And people are like, oh, well, we'll use gold instead. Well, gold, for the most part, in civilized countries, hasn't been used as a form of currency in quite a while. I think it's, I forget what the exact day was, but it's, it's over 50, 50, 60 years. Um, you know, the worth of gold is completely dependent on governments taking it for money. That's why people have wanted it forever, is because whether it be a monarchy or oligarchy, or a dictatorship, or a democracy, the government has relied as, on gold as a form of currency. Um, the reason we got away from it is because we wanted to print more money and go deeper in debt, but that's not the point of this video. Um, you know, gold is reliant on the competence of the federal government, or whatever government is around. Uh, the whole reason we're prepping is we don't believe in the competence of the government, so it's kind of counterintuitive to invest in something that relies on the, you know, thing that we don't think is there. So that's probably the biggest point. Another one is since we haven't used gold or silver as a currency in so long, I don't think I think people are people are arrogant in general about the idea of fiat currency. People don't really understand money or the economy. So people kind of think that all of a sudden overnight when everything goes to shit, uh, people are all of a sudden going to know what the value of gold and silver are. Well, pretty soon, the generation that, that used it as a form of currency is going to be passed away, and people, especially people my generation of baby boomers, they've never used for gold and silver as a form of currency. So, 
what is what is what is an ounce of silver really worth? First of all, most people aren't familiar with commodities markets. They're not tuning in to CNN to see how much gold and silver are worth, unless they're investing in it. And I, most people, I don't think, are. So if a bad situation happens and you need to buy something, what is it worth? How much silver or gold is it worth? How much should that person accept for it? I don't think bartering on that on that system is going to be a very good deal for either person because the person you're dealing with is going to be arrogant. They're going to be like, well, what if they're like, oh, I want an ounce of gold for for this bag of wheat or something. And you're like, no, before the crap hit the fan, gold, you know, gold was this much. And they're like, well, I have a bag of wheat and you have that and I'm going to take an ounce for this. And you know it's just it's just a pain in the neck because people are so stupid anyways they don't know what they're talking about. You're just gonna be you know this this bartering garbage. It's just, it, it's just not a good idea in my opinion. I don't, I don't I think people generally the idea is people are gonna be arrogant about the values. So I don't think people are gonna gold and silver aren't gonna be worth as much as people think just because people are so arrogant about their values. Another one. Uh, so okay, so you're not gonna use that. What what should you invest in? I think. Probably the best thing is converting your wealth, money, time, energy, blah, 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 um, is best converting into goods, things people will need, things that you will use, because the whole point of prepping is you're preparing for the worst but hoping for the best, so don't buy anything you really don't need or you're not going to use or you won't eventually end up using. Oh, excuse me. Um, uh, what do I mean? Uh, well, say you have a food storage. Why don't you invest in a couple, a couple more bags of wheat? which are relatively cheap, or cheaper, um, and come to the fan, you have some extra food. What can that food be used for? Well, if things don't get better, or hyperinflation, or the government doesn't take care of it in an appropriate amount of time, or not at all, you have extra food storage to rely on, which I would consider wealth, and it will get you by for longer. Um, okay, so, you know, right away you oh man, I forgot this important prep, I don't know what I was thinking, I've done so much research, now that I'm actually in the situation, I'm realizing the seriousness of the situation, I forgot this one thing, I need to trade someone for this thing, someone who had it, you know, pre-everything happening. Well, now you have all this extra week that you start up, this person over here is, you know, going out of his mind, his kids are friggin' hungry because he was just too busy, you know, going to work every day, worrying about the daily grind and not doing anything. His kids are at home going, Daddy, Daddy, I'm hungry. But he has this certain thing. Say it's toilet paper. You forgot about toilet paper because you were worried about guns and shooting zombies and stuff or whatever. And you forgot toilet paper, which makes sense to me because I think a lot of people would do that. They focus on having 10,000 rounds of ammo, but they don't have, you know, toilet paper or brownies, paper towels to wipe up their kid's face when their kid just spit up the wheat that you've been storing because they didn't like the way it tastes. Anyways, I have kids, so. Um, so yeah, so you trade that guy for the paper, you trade that guy for the toilet paper, and uh, what does that guy need? Well, yeah, he needs the food right now. Uh, you can't have gold. What do you think he's gonna, what do you think he's gonna, how much gold? He's not, his kids can't eat the gold. He's like, why, why is he gonna accept the gold or the silver? Oh, well, in the hopes that he can trade someone else for something that they actually have? Well, he, how much does it cost? How much should he give you? Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I never really done with gold or silver. Like, but if you have wheat, he, he can bake that into bread and feed it to his kids. He's probably willing to accept a lot less value-wise of the wheat for the toilet paper, specifically because his kids are in a situation where he's kind of desperate, and you are going to get a better deal because you have what he needs directly, so he doesn't have to go through a middleman. He can, people in general are impatient, and they don't want to go through different steps to get what they want, even in this crisis situation. The impatience is kind of a human attribute that we're not going to get away, you know, get rid of overnight. Um, and you can directly trade him what he needs for what you need. So, you know, that value, how, how much wheat do you give him? You give him a couple pounds of wheat, that's what, a couple bucks? And he gives you, you know, his whole supply of toilet paper, because he's, right now he's worried about feeding his kids, he's not worried about wiping, wiping his butt. So you just got freaking how much, like, toilet paper, especially in my area, I live in California, toilet paper is ridiculously expensive to wipe your freaking butt, and you wipe it with, might as well wipe it with dollar bills, you probably will, post hit shit that hits the fan, but, um, I'm just telling you right now, toilet paper is a ridiculously expensive prep, at least in my idea. So you just got, say, he, he purchased the freaking toilet paper, he had a whole bunch because his wife's a clean freak or something, 
and you purchase that from him for a couple pounds of wheat, cost you a couple bucks, and you got fifty dollars worth of toilet paper, you know, which here's like fifty rolls, which most households have, at least my grandparents do. Um, so yeah, this is just a better value overall to I think to store practical preps. Like what like uh, water purification I think will be really important because most people won't won't think about that. Water purification and food I think will be the two most important because human beings can't live without it. So and I think most people relatively don't think about it on a daily basis. We just like oh I turn on the faucet water comes out and that's wonderful. Um, so that bye bye that's that's pretty much the most important thing. It's like. Some people are like, oh, just do it a little bit. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't think in what you're preparing for. I don't think that situation, like, I think it'll be more of a, you know, a bad thing than a good thing. Cause what, what do you have disparate people? What if you do have martial law? What are those people gonna do? Once they find out you're trading with gold, you know, you're trading with gold. Oh, oh, I'm gonna go take that person's freaking gold. And like, oh, I have guns. I have guns. The whole point is not to get in a situation, you know. Yeah, you have guns in case you get in a situation, but the whole point is to avoid the situation altogether. You know, it's like it's kind of like uh, what homicides, like homicides from uh, from from guns. Seventy-five percent of people were committing or have committed some kind of crime. So just not not, not by doing anything illegal, you can pretty have a pretty good chances of not getting shot. So it's kind of like practical sense, you know, like. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, use, use your brain. Just kind of like, oh, buckling in your seatbelt, there's like a significantly better chance that you're going to live if you get in a car crash than not buckling it. Oh, and it takes you two seconds. So why not, you know? It's like, it's the same thing. It's like, why put yourself in a situation, you know, I have a couple pounds of wheat. I could just say, oh, yeah, I, I, oh, man, it's like, that's the last wheat I have. Like, I'm so glad that I have it. And, you know, it's like, that's a lot easier to play off than, oh, I was, this is my last gold bar. <laughs> it's like, obviously, if you were storing gold bars, most people are going to think you have more. They might be a little bit less inclined to think you have more food if everyone's in the same situation, or at least the perception is everyone's in the same situation. So I think that's something to think about. Uh, if anyone has any uh, comments, you know, leave them. I'm sure everyone's going to have a whole bunch of comments. So, oh, I like gold and silver. You suck. But that's just my opinion, and I hope, you know, someone else kind of learned from it, or at least shares the same idea, so I don't feel like some outsider in the purple community. So, something to think about it. Thanks, guys.